is Pokemon investing viable long-term? I'm going to address that point, but first, something that's related, I want to take a look at this poll. Posted this, how long have you been in the hobby? With most of my content being about investing, some about collecting because I am a collector as well. I wanted to see how many, how long people who are watching my videos have been in the hobby. And we had 528 votes so far. It has The poll hasn't even been up for 24 hours yet. But 44% less than one year and 24% one to two years. Three to four, 21%, five to nine, 6%, and 10 plus years, 5%. Now, you may be wondering, why? what does that have to do with Pokemon investing being viable long-term? Well, buckle up. We're going to go on a little bit of a rant here. But just to uh, start, if you're new to the channel, uh, what is Pokemon investing? Uh, traditionally, it's buying booster boxes, sealed uh, booster boxes. These are the ones that have 36 packs. Not Traditionally, not the booster bundles or elite trainer boxes. Usually, the booster boxes do better, the best, long-term. Traditionally, there's always exceptions. There's other products that do well. But uh, the idea is they only print so many of these, and then they get opened. So it's simple supply and demand. And once the supply starts going down, if the demand is up, traditionally, they just keep going up. Uh, and there's always exceptions. But the the main reason i want to bring this up is because there's a lot of people uh out there on reddit um, even in some of the comments saying that pokemon investing will not be viable because everybody is has boxes and boxes and boxes of these uh different sets just sitting in their closets sitting in warehouses or whatever right and the reason i'm bringing up the poll with 44% being less than a year, um, is the truth of it is, is that most people are going to, well, one, this is what I've seen, I've seen it um, all over the place. One, most people, they they don't even have that many boxes, uh, the, the average person, right? The casual person who goes, oh, Pokemon cards can go up in value. You know, they, they don't put that much money into it. It's just a few boxes here and there. Um, you know, maybe they got a few ETBs, some booster bundles, some sleeved. Um, go on Reddit, you see a lot of these kind of posts, people showing their sealed collection, which, to be clear, there's nothing wrong. Invest how you want, collect how you want. I'm not judging you for that. I just want, I'm getting to my point, but the point is that not everybody is hoarding, sitting on tons and tons of boxes, and a lot of people, the sad truth is they're going to be out of the hobby or out of investing, out of collecting within probably a year or two. And that's just kind of what happens. It's usually um, kind of just a phase that people are in. <laughs> it was never a phase for me. But um, yeah, it's just a phase that people kind of go through and they they get all excited about it. And then so either they're not going to get into it far enough to take it seriously, which is fine. So, you know, they only have a few boxes. They just they just end up opening them. It's very, very common. People just end up opening their boxes, which is the most fun part, right? Everyone likes to open packs, right? So nothing wrong with that. But the other thing that will happen, which is very common, and if they're in for a year or two, once their boxes start to see, you know, any decent amount of profit, uh, they're gonna sell. They're going to sell and they're going to get out. It's very common. They, they, they move into something else. This happens all the time just with hobbies in general. People move from one hobby to the next. They jump around. Uh, it's kind of human nature. You know, you get into something and you get very into it. And you move on to the next thing when you get bored. So it's, it's very common. So the notion of is Pokemon investing viable because there are so many people investing in Pokemon that there's just going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of boxes available forever. Well, I will say this. <clears throat> there are more people investing in Pokemon than ever before. That is true. It's just the, the, the reality of it is, unfortunately, people, people don't take it seriously. You're not going to be in, they're not going to be in it long enough or they're going to open their product, or they're just going to sell too early. So when I'm talking sealed investing, I'm talking like at least five years, five to 10, five to 10 year window is kind of where I'm at. 
um, with some exceptions on some of the boxes, I probably will be looking to hold some longer term, like, I mean, 15, 20 years, possibly, depending on the sets, depending on the boxes. But me, I'm in a five to 10 year window for, for most. And there's nothing wrong as well with you know, say you bought this, say you bought this Lost Origin box um, for a hundred bucks, and you sold it for two hundred. That's great. That's great money, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Take your profits. Take your money. You earned that, right? Uh, my point is just that the people who are going to do that, they're not in it for the long haul. So if you're talking about buying boxes, s sitting them in your closet, um, is this going to be worth hundreds to thousands of dollars in five to ten years? Most likely, you're going to be good because of all the reasons that I'm saying. It takes a lot of commitment to sit on this much money and have that discipline to have these in your closet. So um, that's that's pretty much, we're kind of getting towards the end of it. I just wanted to make this video touching on that, um, that it is, it is viable, in my opinion. Um, we're going to continue to see success in sealed investing. Um, other products will do well besides booster boxes, but booster boxes are where I put most of my uh, time and money into. And I don't see it slowing down for several reasons. Also, there's something, there's a few things you guys have to think about for the hobby itself. If you've been to a Collecticon or a big card show, you're going to see a few things, and this is what I've really noticed at the last few shows I've been to, is that there are so many kids currently collecting Pokemon cards. I'm talking kids from like five, I mean there's younger kids, but like five to five to ten, to eh, five to like, yeah, five to thirteen, somewhere in that range, like little kids to like young teenagers. There are so many. And with the investing, um, there's another aspect that we also have to think of, and I've addressed this before, um, with the newer Pokemon and the newer sets. I'll give a few examples. Um, a lot of people currently, like, Twilight Masquerade kind of got poo-pooed on, but the Greninja did really well with popular Pokemon. Uh, Stellar getting pooped on by a lot of people and they don't understand the Terrapagos or any of the new Pokemon, which is fine. It's understandable. But what you guys need to understand is that these kids going to these card shows now, these little kids that are opening packs now, these are the boxes that they're going to chase. The kids watching the anime on, on Netflix or wherever, seeing the Terrapagos or seeing any of these new Pokemon, this is their base set. So that is another thing that you guys have to consider. If you don't like the newer sets you have to you have to think it doesn't matter if you like it though for investing collect what you want like if you don't if you don't want it um or you don't like it don't collect it that's fine but for investing you have to think if you're thinking five to ten years like i said long term so this um you know like 10 years that 10 year old is 20. He's got, he, maybe he's got a job he's got some money and Maybe he wants to go back to Stellar Crown. He wants to pull the Terrapagos. You don't, you, you know, that's, that's my approach. So, um, this is kind of a rambling video, but I don't skip any sets anymore for that exact reason. And mainly, I've said this before, Twilight Masquerade kind of changed my opinion. And Temporal a little. Temporal hasn't performed as well. But those were two sets where I was, from a collecting standpoint, I was like, mm -mm, I don't really... I mean, there's a few cards that I liked, obviously, but I just, I was not touching, for collecting, I wasn't touching those sets. But, Twilight changed the game. And that's what proved to me that um, when you're investing, you have to look at it from a different approach. I'm not saying to like, oh, Stellar Crown, load up and, you know, put your life savings into it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, um, for my approach, I buy every set. I'm not skipping and I'm looking five to ten years at the minimum. Maybe I'll, then maybe I'll sell some of the lesser investments and reinvest um, kind of approach. But Pokemon investing is very much alive. It's very much possible. 
it's not as crazy as you guys think. While there are, it is important to note, um, I'll bring up another point. If you've seen Alpha Investments, Rudy, um, Big Whale, go check out his channel if you want. I'm talking pallets and pallets and pallets and pallets of booster boxes. Um, he's on another level. And he just made a video recently uh, saying that he's never seen another person who invests like him. So um, not that there aren't other uh, people like Rudy out there. So there definitely are whales. But I think they're few and far between. And you also have to understand, last point, right? So it's viable. People are going to be in and out of the collecting investing. They're not going to be as in it. So if you hold your boxes, you will do well. The last and final point that you have to consider is that Pokemon is the most popular and highest grossing franchise of anything ever of all time. So you have to have some confidence in the franchise uh, itself, knowing that long term, even if you don't like the cards, that even if, uh, say, let's say Pokemon's not the number one franchise, say it drops to number two or number three, that's still so much money and so many people into it uh, that you're going to be doing well. And last point just came to me. Some people have said for investing or collecting, uh, if you're, if you collect sealed or you're investing in sealed product, I've heard a lot. Don't, um, only buy what you wouldn't mind opening. If it goes to zero, I got news for you guys. It's never going to go to zero. It, it, it can't really go to zero. Look at um, MetaZoo. MetaZoo's like, it wasn't even that big. It had its little splash. It's dead. It's done. It's over. Those boxes are still selling for money. They're not free. People aren't giving them away. They're not using them to light fires. So um, if you're worried about Pokemon going to zero, it's just not going to happen. It's not... Uh, it's not really possible because somebody will always at least give you something for it. And yeah, so um, if somebody says that for Pokemon investing, that's their counterpoint of, oh, it could go to zero. It kind of can't, especially the number one franchise of all time. It's it's never going to be worth zero. And, you know, we've never, if you give it a few years, we've never seen boxes below MSRP and give it a few years. So um, traditionally it's, it's pretty safe. You just have to be smart about it. Um, also I don't, when it comes to Pokemon investing, I'm not saying invest your entire net worth into Pokemon. I don't do that personally. I wouldn't tell you to do that. I try not to tell you guys to do stuff I wouldn't do. Um, so yeah, it's while I have money invested in it, it's not a big portion of my net worth. It's very small. So, um, what, so it is, it, it's, especially if you're only doing small amounts, very safe. And uh, also, I think mainly you should probably do it if you like Pokemon. That's my opinion. Because, uh, yeah, I'm rambling. I'm going to I'm gonna end it here. Uh, I just wanted to talk about Pokemon investing. Is it viable uh, in general? Just the, the wide census and booster box investing is mainly what I'm touching on. So... That's going to do it for this one, guys. Um, if you made it this far in the video and you didn't hate my rant, uh, obviously you enjoyed the content. So do yourself a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let me know in the comments below um, what you guys think of the current state of Pokemon investing. I will catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.